and seven o'clock, something like that. Um, I'll pass six or twenty-seven on day, whatever day, 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 day sixteen. So I spend my time here in uh, Dundee, and uh, by God's grace, or if it's well, you know, I always say if it's well because uh, sometimes I think, and then God's got another plan. I'm on my way to Kwasi Sabantu. So I'll catch you guys later. Cheers. He has fire in his eyes. And a sword in his hand And he's riding a white horse Across this land He has fire in his eyes And a sword in his hand He's riding a white horse All across this land And he's calling out to you and me Will you ride? Hi everybody, yeah, so um, that was me on my way to Kwasi Sizabantu. Uh, but God had other plans, uh, yeah, um, I got to Kwasi Sizabantu and was told that this place is actually closed for more than a year. Um, and I got to a stage where there was no petrol and there was uh, there was nothing left except faith. And I miserably, miserably, miserably failed in the faith thing. And I just got to a stage and I said to the Lord, Lord, you know what? I've kind of had it with this gospel and uh, I can't handle this anymore. In any case, the Lord said to me, you know, and I said, Lord, I'm, I'm putting everything down and I'm selling the bike. And the Lord just said to me, it's not even your bike to sell. So I was even more devastated because it's, it's not my, you know, it's not my bike. I forgot when God gave me the bike whose bike it is. So quickly he wanted us to forget, and uh, yeah, I severely repented and uh, just took up the bike and started driving, because he's a God of impossible, and uh, yeah, just kept on driving. Eventually, after many kilometers and long time, there was no more fuel. Um, I eventually got to stop, and yeah, the the, the petrol wasn't really finished. I don't know, whatever. So yeah, the Lord has then, uh, he just kind of showed me this, he, he took me through this and I was at a very low place in my spiritual walk with Jesus and uh, and God just showed me how vulnerable I am again, um, you know. It's, it's, uh, it's so, you know, when you kind of think that you've reached, you've kind of walked off a cross and you've kind of, you think you've got faith and God brings you a place where you just, fall down in pieces and at his feet and sweep and repent for you disbelieve and he always looks after you and he always carries you through and he's always has carried you through and the world God then just picked me up and he took me to Pennington and I he, he took me to this worthy man with the garden and uh, today I'm at another friend's place at Pennington the people I met previously when I walked across so yeah, um, how long am I going to stay here? Only God knows. I've just given up. God is in control. He's always been in control. And I'm starting kind of in my misery and in my whatever you want to call it, starting to know these things. And, uh, you know, every time I think I know God, I just breaks everything down and he brings me to a place of nothingness. And when I get to that place of nothingness and I just kind of fall at his feet and say, Lord, he picks me up again, and then he says, I'll, I'll carry you. There's no place for you in this ministry. There's no place for you in this gospel. The only me, myself, and I must die. That's actually a nice verse. The only me and myself and I must die. So, yeah, I'm in Pennington. Um, let's see what happens tomorrow. Have a great evening. Cheers.